We bought the house 18 months ago. We knew it was our dream home. We were going to do a major renovation. They gave them a huge down payment. They just went through the wall and into the drain. The water was flowing onto the sidewalk as Tanya was uh, doing the laundry. No permit shows it. No permit shows it. We have no vapor barrier. Is it going to keep the cold on that side and the warm on this side? No. They insulated it and then plastered it in. Illegal. Not going to be easy, but there's nothing we can't do. It's just how much damage do we have to do to do it. My phones. Look at this. Is that garbage or what? Look at buggers. They haven't vented anything. This is ridiculous. Everything is wrong. I've decided now to gut it. Take it all down. My comes, I love you. <laughs> me too. You want a good job to keep me in shape? I'll be a contractor. Unacceptable. <laughs> God, I love my job. <laughs>
I mean, that's just a, another smooth contractor that's going to convince you that, no, we don't need this. It's going to cost you more money. Actually, it's just cost you a hell of a lot more money. Okay, we have one stack here and one here. And they would have had to cut the floor from there to here to tie in. And then, again, they've got to go actually right up to the attic for air, air behind water. So that's why they didn't do it. That's why they didn't want to get a permit. I'm going to have to gut the laundry room. I'm going to have to pull up this floor. We're going to have to saw cut it right to the stack there. And because it's not vented, that's a problem. Let's go look upstairs. We're going to have to tie the inch and a half vent line directly from that source up through the house, first floor, second floor, out to the attic and tie into air. Now, I like this. Look at this bedroom. Well, we fell in love with it the first time we came here. Is that and chalet that effect? House, and uh, we said, that's it. Let's look at the bathroom. This is the bathroom they did, the second contract. Yes. It's our spa and, and becoming sort of thing. Okay. So we have plumbers obviously that know what they're doing. Why did they choose to go through the furnace room and not another 10, 20 feet over to the original stack? Was the same plumber that worked up no. here? No. No. Now that explains it. Yeah. No, he was not. They chose the easiest route, which was about six feet away. It's only a washing machine. Shouldn't be an issue, right? It's not the right way. I'm sure he knew it wasn't the right way, but the owners don't know it's the right way. So they get away with it. We're gonna take the laundry room all apart. We're gonna rip up that floor and we will start feeding a run to the stack, cut in, and then we're gonna have an issue getting that vent up through the attic because that's where we want it. It's not like I'm gonna punch a hole through your wall and bring your ABS pipe outside of your house. Yeah. I don't think you'd like that. So we're gonna have to do that through the inside. Unfortunately, I'm going to ruin a little bit of your walls here, but whatever I break, I'm gonna fix. Well, we know you'll make it right. We're gonna take this apart, we're gonna rip it up, we'll fix everything that's necessary to give you a proper laundry room here. We gotta be precise where you drill, and you'll have clearance. Yeah. We would just like to get everything fixed so we can finally kind of move in, start having people over, socializing yes. again, and not have this as sort of your 100% your focus all the time is just house, house, and house. Oh uh, yeah, let's get some tools, let's get some drop cloths, and we'll get this going. Right on. Put some drop glass down here. Pull the washer and dryer, pull the sink. We'll put it out here for now. Okay. And we are gonna get wrecking. Now we're gonna disconnect the sink, pull out the whole cabinet countertop, move the washer and dryer, pull this partial wall here. Uh, I wouldn't actually mind taking a look at this, see if we have insulation here. So I'll go stage at a time. Normally we'll make sure the countertops are screwed down. And in this case, it's not, when it makes it easy for us. I'm quite confident we're gonna find some surprises in here. I can't wait to open up the wall to see this plumbing. Mike, look at the build-up. I know, eh? This is, you know, they paid a lot of money for this. They paid a lot of money for crappy guys that don't even care about what they do. It's a couple of finishing nails rather than screws. They probably left their drill at home that day. Well, this wall is just freezing cold, and that, I can tell. There can't be any insulation in there. That is really cold. I got a bad feeling that I'm going to be into a little bit of a nightmare here. If it's not insulated, obviously the contractor didn't care whether or not he had a warm room here. And by code, it has to be insulated and vapor buried. This is a cold area. We have two cold garages. Very cold room right now. I still have my coat on. I want to keep it on. However, what do I just do? The plumbing here? And I close my eyes to this and everything freezes in the future and water's everywhere? I don't think so. A little bit of mold on the floor. That's from the washing machine. I don't know why we have mold, but we do. I have to pull this wall down first. I want to inspect the plumbing issues of the drainage because I have a feeling they did do a vent and I want to see what they tied into. I know it's not run through the house. I have to take a look at where the sink was tied into. So we'll start with this wall first. This will give me an indication of how far I have to take this room apart. seeing debris inside the walls, so they don't want to take it with them. Look at the vent. There's our vent. <laughs> Thank God it's not hooked to the main line because we have methane gas inside this house. Vented totally illegally. This is not the way to do it. No permit shows it. No permit shows it. This has to be in a junction box. I don't care if it's a receptacle box, a dryer box. We're not allowed to use this wire within metal studs. We have to use BX cable because metal studs are sharp edged, which will 
pierce the lines, cause a short. Look at the copper, not even tied into anything. We do not want copper against metal. What the metal will do is corrode the copper and eat a hole right through it. So when I see the garbage in the wall, when I see the electrical, now I want to see all the electrical because if this is wrong, I know we're going to find things up here. Let's take it all down. We'll trace everything. We'll trace the electrical. I don't know what they've done with the electrical, where they've tied it off, but if that's wrong, now I want to see everything. What did I say about copper touching metal? Within probably in the next couple of years, that will put a hole right through that copper. After we just removed this wall, what I see is a bunch of holes cut on the other side. You see how this is done? We have more in here. We have more here. This tells me that this wall was existing. So whoever did do the metal studs before did put in BX cable. They tied a receptacle to the other side, which is the furnace room. Another receptacle on this side, which we had a cabinet here. So what they do? They closed it off. This is a live line. Okay, they insulated it and then plastered it in. Illegal. I punched a hole in this wall. I do find insulation. Wonderful. We find insulation. However, we find no vapor barrier. So we have no airflow stopping here at all. Just a little bit of insulation to try and keep a little bit of warmth in here. Incorrect. Now the whole room comes down. We're going to take this wall completely down. We're going to stud it with 2 by 4 We're going to fix the electrical, fix the plumbing. And I just started. You know, I could turn a blind eye to this and say this is not my issue, I'm here to do plumbing, but since we're here and we're going to do some damage, we're going to open it up and we're going to make it right, and that way I don't get a call back. All I see is problem after problem after illegal, illegal things here, and yet what do we have? We have a contractor that says, no, you don't need a permit. It's only going to cost you more time and cost you more money, and we're going to have to charge you more money. Here's more money for you. That is not the way to close up the hot air duct line. Look at that, not even screwed in. These guys slipped them in place and just <laughs> didn't even screw it. I guess that made it easy to move so they could drywall it. So we have insulation on the top here. Look what they missed. This is the bottom plate. Okay, there's your outside plate. There's your floor joist. Why isn't that insulated? What do we have in here? We have copper. What's in the copper? Water. So we have a cold zone. I can't believe there, I mean, it's freezing outside and I can't believe this hasn't burst yet. Oh, so they did insulate it here, but they don't insulate the corner. Like, what is that going to stop? Is it going to stop anything? Is it going to keep the cold on that side and the warm on this side? No. Simple plumbing problem. Yeah, simple plumbing problem. Uh, there's a great example as to why I do not use metal studs in the basement at all. Totally rusted. That will rot out in no time. This cable is cheaper. For them, it's simple. They probably don't even know about the BX. They don't even think about this. Obviously, he's not a licensed electrician. He would never run this type of cable within metal studs. They know their job, yet do they care? No. Why? They convince the, the client no permits are necessary. They know they're not going to be here because they haven't moved in the house yet. So let's quickly get this done, close this up, and get the hell out of here and make multi-thousands of dollars. This way we don't have to waste time calling the inspector to inspect their work, which is never going to pass. Not in a million years, none of this is going to pass. None of this is going to pass, none of the studying, none of the insulation, the plumbing, everything is wrong. So at this point, I think I'm just going to disconnect this electrical so we don't hit our heads on this. We'll get rid of the rest of the studs. We'll get the jackhammer ready and cut that path. Enough. I'll tell you, there's nothing I hate more than pulling up a brand new tiled floor. No choice. We're going to have to cut a trench all the way to the main stack. See that? You got a hammer? These tiles aren't even bonded. No surprise there. The guy hasn't done anything right so far. Why would I expect anything better on this job? The trench we're cutting here will carry the drain pipe to the main stack, which ties into the city sewage system. We're just gonna come across here and go straight through, okay? Don't worry about the rest of the floor. Let's open up that path. Then we'll worry about pulling up the rest of the tile on the rest of the floor. I just removed the clean out. I took it off to try and help find the direction of the pipe. And at this point, it appears that it's coming this way, which is kind of weird, but we'll just keep coming towards it. And hopefully we hit it around this area. We don't have to tie right in. It doesn't matter. 
but the less we have to cut, the better. It's just kind of irregular to see two down stacks at this point. Normally, I'd see them a lot further apart, but hey, I didn't build this house. There's one thing that we've noticed. I guess they ran out of thin set. Thin set's rather expensive, and they bought a bag of grout, and they use grout to hold down the tile over the thin set. You can see the two different colors. One's gray. That's the thin set. Here we have the beige. That's grout. Well, you don't use grout to adhere tiles. Grout is a filler, and it fills in between. It's not an adhesive. It just won't work. Well, we have gone on a digging spree and found our treasure. It's a four inch line. We'll put in a four inch Y at this point and bring the drainage from the laundry room right through the floor, tie in. We'll close it back in again. What's up, Tony? Okay. Nice to see you, buddy. Hey, Tony, nice to see My you. My son, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Well, we're all ready for you. Made a hell of a mess, but come on and take it's a look. Okay. I want to come up here for the washing machine. Yep. Okay, we'll take the sink from the same location cap that and we'll run it through the wall. We'll have the walls built by Monday, okay. uh, back Tuesday for vent if you can do that. Yep. So we'll run this today right now. Yep. We're gonna tie right in the PVC on the floor here. So you got a four inch Y? Yeah, and what I'm gonna do, Mike, I'm gonna stub out a clean out. So I could either break a bit to the side of one, either side of the door or put something further down. I prefer there just because we have, we have 145, a 90, because that's probably over 20 feet. Okay, so we could get away with one right about here. I'm fine with that. Okay. Thank you, sir. It won't take long. All right, let's okay. get at it. Okay, so Mike's exposed this four inch PVC line underground. We're gonna cut a Y into it and we'll run a two inch drain over to the laundry. A Y has to be used on a horizontal drain. Just for the flow, you're gonna follow the water. A T, you could, with a drain cleaning apparatus, you could end up going either way. So in all those fittings, just have to keep going downstream. That should be glued on. I'm pulling that off with my hand. Roots could penetrate that and go right through the system. So that one that we pulled apart should have been glued like this. We formed a fitting that literally is gonna slide right in because there's no movement on that pipe underground. We've got two four inch fern coat couplings, they call them. We're gonna slip them on basically and then slide them over. So we make something the same size, just a little smaller actually, to slide the couplings over both pieces of pipe so we can then put it in, which is the goal here. And we just tighten them up. So same thing, we're gonna put a Y on there for that clean out. So the Y, it's gonna flow this, the clean out will be up top and it'll flow down. If it's got too much grade, you can leave solids behind. If there's not enough, same thing, water's gotta flow down. So this stuff's so easy to work with, right? Just glue it together. This clean out is within 20 feet of the next clean out. So most hand snakes, these little snakes are 20, 25 feet long. So we've just made it easy that if they do have a problem, they can clean it from there to this point, and if not long enough to get into the four inch, they can go from this guy. Stick a cap on that so they don't get gassed in. That's all for now. Beautiful. Okay, it's fine with me. And then what I was looking at for the vent, we'll continue it right up, run through the rafters across here. We'll come yep. through the bulkhead that's going to be here. Follow up the central vacuuming, yep. which I've already found the point in that wall right upstairs, yes. directly up. Excellent. And that's going to be through this wall right here, which will continue straight upstairs into the second floor. We'll punch a big hole in this wall, a big hole in the wall upstairs, directly up through the attic, and tie into an outside vent source. I cannot run up on the outside of the walls due to the peaks, the windows, the structure, all headers galore. I can't get through that. It has to be on an inside wall where I can cut the bottom plate, bring it up, and I'm gonna go right up this wall, directly up this, right up into the attic, and that's why I wanna tie into an existing vent stack that runs up through the roof. I already went outside and looked at it. Oh, now I gotta bring in the homeowners. Just let them know what I found, take a look at it, and let them know what I have to do to fix it. What we thought was a simple project in just relocating a laundry room from a second floor to a basement opened up a whole can of worms. We went in because they had soap suds on the front of their lawn. And what did we discover? We've had problems with the plumbing and I guess the vent. Even here in the garage, our existing sewer pipes weren't connected properly and may have separated in the ground. I mean, that's something you'd never find out. It does look good. When we take it all apart, nothing is going to work properly. There were electrical wires just hanging loose behind the wall, sort of between the framing. Studding wrong, insulation wrong. It's just amazing. It's, it's a real shock. Well, number one contractor, he walks in and really takes their money. Number two contractor, he comes in and he does it all wrong. 
and as for the, the contractors we dealt with before, they shouldn't be in this business. They should be out of business. What we're going to have to do is replace all the plumbing, replace all the electrical, all the studding, new insulation. I think we're going to add some radiant heat in the floor. Luckily, we're in time that we actually can put it in, and it is an extra, but something that we're really looking forward to. Not a big deal. It's what we do. We're looking forward no. to the end of it and to know that the dust is settled and, and obviously being able to do laundry. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Which is what started all of this. We'll make it right. By code, we have to vent it. If you do not vent your line, your water will not run down the drain the way it should, quickly. Because as soon as water rushes down a pipe, it cuts off all air. So air behind that water allows that water just to fly down. You know it's going to be a demolition, but to walk in and not see walls, I can't believe it. It's total devastation. Everything's just torn apart, and to see the trenching through concrete, it's a real shock. We completely studded the area and filled in the floor. And we are ready to uh, fix all the electrical, redo the plumbing, and continue the vent line, just like we talked about, and bringing that upstairs. It's continued right into the other room. We have a clean out in the floor right at this location. You need a clean out within 20 feet of drain in the floor. They ran the electrical through the cold air return. We could leave it there. Uh, there's nothing in the code that says you can't. The only thing that they ask you to do is, if the box is there, you have to seal it airtight. Which they did not do. Which they did not yeah. do. We had a huge hole running through here. The best bet would be to pull it out and try and junction it off somewhere else. Do you see all this wiring? My guess is it's right in here on the other side of this wall on the switch, so it might be just a feed to that, and if that's the case, we can carry it back, junction it in there, and run a new line in. Line in yes. Excellent. I'm trying to feed this wire through. We don't want to do a junction in the ceiling here. I want to bring it down and junction it at the switch, so that way we don't have to put in an access panel. We do have the best tools in the business, and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of old ingenuity here, and it works every time. I'm trying to grab the wire feed it through. I want it to come out here and not, not through the return air. There we go. That's what I want. Now that we pulled that through, we've eliminated all wiring in the air return and uh, we've now brought this junction which feeds the garage and we'll junction it right in the switch box. Why didn't the other guy do that? I'm going to assume he didn't want to go through the trouble we just did. While Maurizio continues the electrical here, we'll go take a look upstairs to see how we're going to run the vent. Guys, this is the central back line that we have downstairs, so what I want you to do is to cut a path right here, straight up in this area, cut that open for me, that's going to give us an eye view of over top of the closet and how I can bring it in upstairs. The reason why I want this cut above the baseboard and below the crown molding is for plastering purposes. It makes it real easy to plaster this area that we've cut open, rather than trying to tie back in and doing a latex cock, it doesn't work for me. This way we can run a full length of pipe, uh, inch and a half, up and in and down, whatever which way we have to go, and easy repair. <laughs> Well, I tell you, it's not going to be easy, but there's nothing we can't do. It's just how much damage do we have to do to do it. That's definitely the shower drain. I'm telling you, everything to do with this house is starting to blow me away. Two by four floor joists. <laughs> right. Two by four floor joists under the shower floor. Not a smart move. This wall used to be three feet that way. And there used to be a bathroom in there. And they moved the bathroom from over there into here. When we're outside here, can we see anything? We see a stack, we do on, see this a stack on this side. Yeah. If we were putting this in, you would likely take a vent straight off, right off the drain connection. And we have ABS. The vent's right there. They vented this here. This is a good sign, seeing this. The issue is we are in the area of this drain yes. right now, right? And I can't bypass it. I can't get by it. Sean, let's just measure for this drain. I'll mark it in the bedroom. Two, two, one. We're going to mark it the same location on this wall. Then we'll go downstairs to figure out exactly where we want to drill. I had hoped to tie in the vent in the bathroom, but that shower is blocking my path. What do you got there, Sherlock? There's an I-beam running on an angle that way. Not straight. That makes no sense to me. Like a lot of things in this house. You've got to be right on the money. 221, we got to be precise where you drill and you'll have clearance. Okay, this is right where the in, in line with the drain. So, I just want to cut a hole here. I want to get to the bottom plate of this wall so I can drill through it and feed that bed stack all the way up here. I was trying to avoid doing this in the bedroom because now I got to paint this whole wall, but I have no choice. Well, it's an insulated wall. It's nice to see. It's actually a pain in my butt. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it is. 
It's hard to run pipe for that, it's isn't it? It's hard to get... run real pipe. Yes. You just answered it for me. Get me dirty. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. Part of the job. I know. We're gonna drill right through there at this point with the uh, two and nine sixteenths drill bit. This is my wood eater. John, while you're drilling that, I'm going to go downstairs and see what uh, Tony's doing just to check on his progress. Tony's been busy. This is the way to do it. Here's the main line running into the floor. We have a clean out here just in case for ever, any reason you had to do that. Good work. We have a T here running vertically. That's a back vent for the laundry sink. Comes back up so you can yep. see the direction. Water flows this way. Air flows behind it. That's yep. what we want to see. Yep. The washing machine will have its own trap, its own vent. And that vent's going to follow our new route up to the attic. We will start to insulate and drywall this up. Yeah. Tony's on his way up to the second floor here to run the vent to the attic. Let's uh, open it up and see what we're in for. Oh, yeah. Aha! Viva la vent deck. Oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, I got a real good visual up here of everything. So it looks like this is uh, getting a little easier now. This is a friggin' joke. I don't believe this. Look at the return air. Yeah. The heat's going right in, out into the attic here. They go and stuff the wall with insulation. Meanwhile, there's nothing in the ceiling. It's no wonder this house is so cold. All the heat's just coming up into the attic. They have insulated this very, very poorly. They've used two by four ceiling joists, which are unacceptable, has to be a minimum of two by six. Rather than insulating and keeping the ceiling warm, they insulated the actual roof. All this has to be insulated. This is not the way to do it, folks. You do not insulate the top. You insulate the bottom. This should be a cold zone. Okay, so we have no problems running up here. We're gonna have to close that off so they have a proper air return. This is a whole huge job on its own. Let's fix the plumbing. We'll recommend somebody to come up here and do all this work. So here's here's that line that comes up the wall that we saw, and it is vented, so I'm going to say good, good to the man that did the plumbing upstairs. He did this correctly. I mean, there's nothing right about this house at this point. There's nothing easy about trying to make this happen. We're trying to now follow Mike's path. It's just awkward because it's set way back in there. So we're just going to bring it over now. We've got something to glue to and measure and tie this one in from the basement. And then we're working upstairs towards the attic. If I were to take a survey on how many homeowners have poked their head in the, in the, into the attic to take a look at what was up there, probably 5%. Pull that pipe up a bit, please. You, oh, you got it glued? Okay, is that good? Yep. All right. Okay, so we've brought our vent coming up from the basement up to the attic. This is a vent picking up that washroom on the second floor, which goes out through the roof over here. So we're just going to cut a TY in, so we've now vented that basement laundry. And then everything's vented the way it should be. How are we doing up there, Tony? We're doing fine, Mike. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hidden in a wall space. We're just making the connection to the vent going outside. So we're putting this guy in the same way as the other ones, so that any water coming in from outside is going to drain down. Okay. We're all finished, Mike. You're the man, Tony. Thank you. Come on down, buddy. That was quick. Do me a favor. I want you to look into uh, three foot wide strips by 10, 12 foot, anything like that. I'm looking at putting in, in floor heating here. Thanks, buddy. All right, all the electrical is done. The plumbing's complete. Now let's put this place back together just like we were never here. Here it is, Mike. We made it to this point so far. This is good. The guys have been busy getting the drywall and getting it plastered, primed, and yet last night they had just finished putting down the in-floor heating underneath the subfloor here. Now that we have uh, laid this room complete and we're ready to tile it, we're just going to finish off the area in the hallway here. Well, there's no doubt it's a lot warmer in here now. However, the homeowners would like some extra heat on the floor, so we chose to put in some in-floor heating. We're gonna make sure the cables run through the floor here because I don't want that underneath when we lay it down. I mean, we only have to go down three sixteenths. Yeah. We are making sure at this point all staples are removed. There's a, you know, a thousand staples. So we're gonna pull them all up rather than hammer them down. We will wash the floor, then set it down, and start timing. Well, on any standard thermostat, 
that you put on the wall and the thermostat will be here, you would expect that that picks up the heat. In this case, it doesn't. The probe, the actual thermostat, will be in the floor and pick up the temperature of the floor and then tell the thermostat to turn on. Most thermostats on the market out there, wherever you put them, that's where it takes the temperature because the mercury switch is inside there. That's where it finds out how warm it is based on the room and will turn on and off. In this case, we can put the thermostat really anywhere. That's, that's great, Mike. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll fish the line down the corner there, fire it right through there, bring it out, and just onto the floor yeah, like that you makes said. Sense. Okay, and stop. Okay, stop there. Can you see it? Yep. We could put it in the laundry room. The only thing with the laundry room, it'll be more cold, because this door is always going to be closed, so it'll be coming on more. We have two garage doors there, and uh, opening and closing them, and she's going to bring that cold draft right across the floor. Here it won't. Okay, Frank, I do not want to do a junction point at the bottom here. We want to keep it up above water Definitely in case not. it floods. I agree. And we'll use conduit, bring it up, junction. And then we'll get over. And just feed it in, eh? Sure. So here's our probe line. We'll get that in the box as well. We'll you know what? Yeah, behind. punch a hole and feed it up the wall. Yeah, punch a hole and keep it through here. No. No. Oh, right through here. Yeah. You want it. yeah, because we're going to be within the void, right? We have Perfect. one here and one here. Yeah, just we'll bring it right up. With a little bit of thin set, we will help really fill the void at the bottom of the wall and protect the line. Now that the probe is in place, we can get the rest of the pads down. To lay this in for heating, we're going to use a V-notch 316 of an inch trowel. What that gives us is 316 inch depth, 316 inch width, and not too much. This is just going to bond right to it. It does matter on, on which trowel you use. You do not want to have too much thin set down, and you don't want to have too little thin set down. So we have, you know, manufacturers suggested installation methods. Let's listen to them because they make sense. With the V notch, what you're doing is creating a suction gap that when we do put the floor on top of this and use a grout float over top of it, that will level it and create a suction gap to hold it down. Once this is completely laid down, we will let it dry for a while and. Yeah, let's figure out the pattern for the tiles. Now we have a very big tile here. So you thinking brick style? I'm thinking brick style. I'm thinking of staggering this. I think this is going to work. We'll determine center of the hallway, base it on our one tile, bring it down here to start. Because well, I don't want too many cuts around this door. So we'll actually start it at this point, feed it back to there, and work our way back. At this point now, what we see is the washer and dryer here, the cabinet here, and this is really now the walking zone. So with that, you know, do we split the room and try and center the tile, which is going to look off as soon as everything's in place, because now this area is the walking zone. So let's take that area, split it down the center, and it just happens to work out for us so we get a full tile off this wall. Because I'm starting the tile from that end. It's very important that I have worked out my perfect center of this hallway, bring it in here, determine where our cuts are going to be. It works. We've just checked that. Now I'm going to carry that back to the wall and we're going to start tiling there so we are precise. By the time we get here, we're exactly where I want to be. This time I'm using a half inch square notch trowel. So now we have a half inch wide by a half inch deep, which gives me a little bit of play on my tiles to give a nice true floor and great grabbing of the tile itself. Just by doing these lines here, as soon as I push the, the tile down on it, that creates a suction and grabs that tile and holds it. We get a nice thickness on top of this to level our tile for one and it bonds in these honeycombs in here because they, they curve in on the inside and it really grabs the tile. This is a porcelain tile, so one thing about porcelain compared to ceramic is if we chip this tile, porcelain is continuous right through with the grain. If it's ceramic, it's only glazed on the top and you'll see clay if you chip it, so it's more money and it's good. I want that nice and true. I want to be able to take that level across from one tile to the other and have no spaces whatsoever. That is a true floor and exactly what we want to see. I don't mind running it a couple different ways to create my trueness, so this works good. Okay, Sean, why don't you continue going in the laundry room here, and uh, we'll go out in the hallway and get the rest of the subfloor down. We're going to use a quarter by 316 V-notch trowel for the subfloor. I want just a little more 
thin set underneath the subfloor than I do the in-floor heating. Just for it to grab, I don't want too much where we're going to buckle it up and we have, you know, raises in the floor, but enough to grab it nice and tight and it definitely has to be a V and not a, a square notched. You can use a square notch, the only issue with that is that it's going to put too much down in the floor and you've really got to push it out. With the V notch, by the time that spreads out, it becomes a nice flat layer and bonds with the fibers underneath and the fibers on top of the uh, in-floor heating. Beforehand, I had Frank do a continuity check on the in-floor heating to make sure we have a complete circuit through it. We don't want to go to all this extreme and there's something wrong with the heating underneath. I'm looking for a fairly level consistency across here. I don't want a lot of it built up in one area. So if I have to trowel it a few times, I have to trowel it a few times. Yeah, well, it's a little extra work, but you know what? It'll last a lifetime. Well, we're only going to tie off to the doorway here today so we can walk through. We'll lay down the, end, the rest of the subfloor today, come back tomorrow, tile the rest of it, and then on uh, Thursday, grout everything, get the trim in. And soon enough, we will have this done and paint upstairs, do all the paint touch-ups, and we give it back to them. We didn't know enough to know that we didn't know, and we're starting to learn. We're discovering more things about our house, also about our decision-making process. We learn together, and we learn from our mistakes. One, no good. Two, junction in there, no good. Three, running it in the downspout, no good. I don't know what the hell this is for. It's a total break in the line here. You don't do this. Last day. We're gonna give it back today. We uh, completed the tiles, got some trim in, we got a cabinets in, sinks all hooked up. Tanya has picked new taps, very nice. We are done our plumbing. Yes, we are. Good. I absolutely love this tile. We got to give it a little bit of a scrub there. We got a little grout over top. Benji's been here working like crazy, trying to finish this while we're working on another one. I have Craig coming in just to paint the whole place, including upstairs. Frank's going to be getting in the pod lights. Well, I feel good about it now because uh, we started from scratch again once we've taken everything out, including the walls and uh, just start it over. And it makes me feel good to create again, to make it the way it should be. It's already warm. I can't believe how warm it is. The very first day I walked in here, it was so cold, and you can feel the difference in this room. It's insulated properly, proper doors in there. Weather tight, you know, what can I say? This is the right way of doing it, and I like it. We're almost done. Benji, what's up, buddy? Well, I got uh, that 24 gauge heavy duct line that we're gonna use uh, for the exhaust on the dryer. We are now inside the furnace room and we're running the dryer vent or the dryer exhaust for inside the laundry room there. We're gonna run it across the bottom. I really don't agree with this uh, type of line running for the exhaust simply because we have a lot of heat coming out of there. If you are gonna use a flex line, it should be a metal flex line or in this case, rigid. Inside this, believe it or not, it actually helps catch the air, the air flow. So we don't want that. Let's give it a nice and smooth surface on the inside. And more lint buildup in these too. Not to mention lint buildup, yeah. correct. Okay. And one of the advantages too that the Galvanites has over the aluminum is that aluminum is soft too, like the flex line. So when people walk by there, if it's aluminum, they'll have more tendency to want it to bend. Whereas the galvanized, it's a little more rigid. And yeah, so it's a couple more bucks, but it's but 10 it's times it's better. It's way better, absolutely. Okay. Compared to the galvanized, what's the difference? That's the difference between the aluminum and galvanized. That's why we use this stuff here. Well, I'll let you get at this. Okay. I'm just gonna go upstairs and check on Sean. He should be prepping the walls before the painters get here. I had a color here that uh, I tried to guess. I had to do a repair here, so I had some scraps from the wall, and I took it into a paint store, and this is what I came up with. That's me trying to match paint. So I said, forget that, and uh, I took my piece to a uh, another paint store that had a scanner. Usually about half of them have uh, scanners nowadays, and I got them to scan the paint, paying attention to the uh, just under eggshell finish of velvet. So I've come up with something that I think is gonna work. So you're just gonna give it a primer coat now with the paint? Yeah, gonna go over the primer. Okay, good. This is not primer, this is primer. But what I mean by primer is giving it a base coat before a finish coat of the whole wall. I wouldn't dare just plaster this prime this and then paint everything one coat because you will see the difference from the primer to the old paint. So you wanna hit it once and then hit the whole thing again once that's dried. Before you grow, 
it's a really good idea to make sure that you've uh, cleared all your edges because if you have any thin set on the tile at all, it's going to bleed right through the grout and you will see it. Much like we see the thin set here, I have to make sure I get that out. And once I have that cleaned up, I'll do a sponge clean and then I'll grout it. That's not too often we tile inside the cupboard, but you know, in this case, we have it continued through. Why have a different floor in here? We had the extra tiles, let's put it in. And it looks pretty good right now. I can vacuum this and then wash it down and apply the grout. If you have a wide grout line, you want to use a sanded grout. Very important, it's a lot stronger than the non-sanded. If you were to use a non-sanded in an area with a wide grout line, it will crack like crazy. I'm ready to put this down. This is not too milky and yet it's not too, uh, too thick, so it gets nice and in there. You want to work it quite a bit. You don't want to just go over it once. You want to get it right in there. So it makes a mess, but you clean it up afterwards. We'll let that sit for about 10 minutes, and then I'll just sponge that down. We have a nice, neat finish. No, we don't have any insulation uh, above. So we can end up using these uh, wonderful retrofit pot lights. Well, if there was insulation, what you need is a metal enclosure that would enclose the, the entire pot light assembly here. So we would actually have a metal enclosure all the way through that would span out about this large. But if you did have an electrical fire, it would end up reducing how fast it would spread throughout the ceiling. What we're doing on this wall is just doing a pass from floor to ceiling so you don't see a lot of patchy spots on the wall. It's a little more difficult, but it makes it look that much better. Also, it's very important on a wall like this. We have to use such a thick pile roller that it can tend to leave ridges on the wall. So what you want to do is keep slight pressure on the right side of the roller, and that eliminates the ridges as you go. It's just beautiful. It's, it's a just, gorgeous pattern. I just can't believe it. We moved this out not too long ago. Yeah, this is definitely what started it all. It was a washing machine. I'll put the dryer in place next and clean up and give them back their home. Hello. Hello. You know what? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, so, I'm done. <laughs> so, oh, I'll well, tell you. Time to have a look. This is the wall that we opened up to get that vent up to your second floor. Uh, yeah. So this is all repaired now. Same as upstairs. We put everything back. Your bed's back. I just can't believe it. You it's can't gorgeous. tell that it was uh, taken yeah. apart at yeah. all. Yeah. After we opened it up, we found nothing right. The only thing that was right was the paint. So and it's probably because you picked it. We appreciate your dedication yeah. to professionalism and your commitment to excellence. My pleasure. My pleasure. We had a little bit of a spaghetti factory to get our way up there, a little bit of weaving to get through, but we worked our way up right up to the attic. We tied into the uh, attic vent line, so now we're direct air down to your laundry room, the way it should have been done in the first place. And we can see why they didn't do this, because they would have had to do what we did. Let's go downstairs. We just love it. It's almost like a brickwork pattern. Yeah. That's the idea. It, it's Because we're L-shaped here and I wanted to keep it nice and straight rather than going diagonal, it was too straight to keep it in line, so we just staggered it and it really gives it a nice effect, especially with the tile you picked. That's yeah, just it's a nice amazing. line. It's wow. just beautiful. It's, it's a gorgeous just pattern. All new baseboard throughout the basement. We might as well tie it in and make it the same. Then we tile inside your closet. Is that ever nice? Oh, that's Makes great. It finishes it off nicely. We have laid it on top of in-floor heating. We put your thermostat inside the furnace room here because you really don't need it out oh. there. It's not set for temperature. There's a probe in the floor. Oh my so goodness. you just oh, open it up. Is that ever neat? This opens up on both sides so you can oh. play with it. Isn't that neat? And all we're going to do is just raise that temperature up. It's set wow. for Fahrenheit, so we'll bring it right up to about 70 degrees. You can play with it at that point and see if you like it or not. We okay. need to go to Florida. That's right. Just turn up your heat, eh? But I feel it warming up. My goodness, you're kidding. Well, you know what? I'm just going to kick off my shoes and try this out. Oh. oh. I would say within the next 10, 15 minutes, you're going to have a completely warm floor. You're right. Oh, we can... Wow, it is warming up nicely. We can use this as it's a... It's just great. As a, this can, you know, be used as a spa as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the laundry room. Great. Oh. Holy... Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh. Well, it's almost brand this new, is isn't it? It's a totally new room. Well, 
Well, I like the taps you chose. Very nice. Thank you. Well, from start to finish, let me tell you, this was a, a joke. Here I thought I was just going to do a little bit of plumbing, breaking your floor, and we ended up pulling down everything. Your studding was wrong. Your electrical was wrong. Your insulation was wrong. There was no vapor barrier. Uh, once we pulled off the drywall, we found that your metal studs, which I'm against in the basement, they're all rotted across the bottom here. Uh, they were not even screwed in together, so your drywall was holding all the studs. And on top of this, we found a lot of electrical problems here that uh, would never have been passed. Uh, really, you should have had three permits here, and the contractor should have made, it, uh, sh made sure of that, but in this case, he did not, and everything would not have passed. And let me tell you about your tile. They use thin set, and then you use grout to lay down your tile. I think the contractor subbed it out to the paper boy and all his friends. That's what it looks like. I mean, who lays tile with grout? Nobody lays tile with grout. Where, what were these guys thinking? I'm out of thin set, I'll use some grout, nobody's gonna know. In this wall right here, his vent was in the open cavity inside the wall. Of course, he wouldn't really know as a homeowner yes. what it's supposed to be like. All you, you saw was that, brand new paint, right? That's it's right, you the finishing, tile. it looked good, it fun you thought it functioned. We cut a path in the floor directly through to your garage and tied it into the sewage line, which is the way it should have been. By the end of it, the tiles look good, new paint, new trim, do things right, it works right. It's not just a matter now that the Inside features look good, but everything behind it now works properly. This area is now done, safe, warm, and you know, yeah. now you can use it properly and you're not going to be yeah. setting your front lawn anymore. So I think you're going to have some fun It'll be nice after, after um, eight months of taking my laundry to my mother and to finally be able to do the laundry at home. As a homeowner, you really do have to be more involved in it. You have to educate yourself, find out what you need, right from permits to what kind of electrical, what kind of plumbing, what kind of fixtures. It's a fun process. It's not going to the dentist and having your tooth pulled. I love my job. I love learning new things and I encourage it to you. Maybe you'll be able to tell your contractor what you need and not let him tell you what you need. Because we know that it really requires a skill of a modern day Sherlock Holmes to figure out and find out what's wrong with this place. This is a book with all the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and uh, we wanted to present it to the modern day Sherlock Holmes. Wow. Well, for the Sherlock I, Holmes I, of the I contractors. Totally, I totally appreciate <laughs> this. And, uh, thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tim. No, thank you for all your work. You it's will. just been terrific. You are so And I've got to give you a hug. Oh. You want to do it right? Get involved in your renovations. Good game. Good game, Dan.